Hey everyone, it's your Simmer here. So, we got a nice surprise about an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, we got contacted about precision farming, responded back as I knew I would need to, just answering the questions they asked to make sure everything was still a go and that people were still interested for our, you know, and so forth. And about 10 minutes after we said, yep, everything's still on track, they said, it's activated. So I've been in here soil sampling where I can. Um, because I don't have thin tires, I can't go into my crop. But at this point, um, yeah, there's nothing I'm going to get off of that field anyway until... I start the next cycle, so as long as I soil sample the southern end before the next planting, I'll be great. And um, I don't know that I really need this section, but at this point it's just kind of a thoroughness thing. I may have missed a little bit there. It usually does a little bit more than the circle. So, yeah, I think it, it gave it to me all. So you can see up on top, we have 116 samples taken. I'm going to go ahead and raise this, fold it up. So if you've not worked with precision farming and the soil sampling, um, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to include it and not really cover it. I have a tutorial on it if, if you want it covered. So you can find that on the channel. Um, I'll go ahead and link it here. Uh, there's actually several of them where I've done a lot of testing and analysis. Because frankly, the crop sensors don't appear to function. The ones that you can buy for the front of your tractor that are 23,000. They don't seem to make any difference at all. And I am not the only one who's done testing that had that result. Now that doesn't mean they won't change it eventually. Um, I haven't tested it in a while. I think you know since the last update I did not test it but they didn't indicate anything in the update to make me think that suddenly they had fixed it. So uh, it would seem like a pretty significant thing and that it would not have just gone unmentioned if it had been handled. I'm uh, trying to figure out where to put this, honestly. I think I'm just going to go here in the shed and then just put it next to the tree there. Or, like, right there. Probably have to lower it to detach it with manual attach. So it connects with hoses and and then just connects on the hitch there, as you can see. So so that's the only investment we've made right now. But obviously the, the big investment is now going to be... Oops, I might need to do that with the... I wonder if I need to do that with the... Uh, scout attach to tell it that I want it to go and send the samples to the lab because I think I did used to do that before because at this point all I've done is take them but then they need to be analyzed and sent to a lab there we go send soil samples for analysis so you do need this connected so You'll see the results in the map soon. And then here, I believe this is the cost to do that. So 117 is it's $150 per uh, per sample. And it's usually good for three or four years before it starts telling you that you need to resample. But at this point, that's all I'm able to do. There's nothing I'm actively doing with precision farming beyond that, but I just did want to pop in 
and start off the next episode and let you know where we stand because the thought was well we'll just be coming back in here for harvest and to get some cows but right now that's not the case so the oats are sadly on the forage stage I neglected in my counting and excitement to include that extra day where it's really five months so tomorrow they'll be ready which still could mean that we could start moving cows in to the farm September as we thought because my intent will be to be here early morning start the harvest um, you know drop straw as I go and so after just a few passes I will pick up straw and get it in here so that the robotic feeder can either start or at least I can then see that it is going to be waiting for someone to be there in either case will be good and I believe I have enough pig feed to get the pigs till tomorrow there was still 9,000 liters when I got on this morning so I think we're in good shape but I'll see you in a while it's actually later but I see rain coming all right so the rain's coming at 8 um, and it's there for a while so I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm here and just go with it because it should be harvest time and if I can at least get some stuff going and I think I got one more there we go so coming out here in the dark for the first time, having that trailer there is not something I'm normally going to have. So, um, But yeah, if I can get going and get some straw and get the things moving, maybe during the rain, if I have that opportunity, I can move cows. You know, there's options. Alright, so the pigs have not starved yet which is important um, but if I can do everything I, I'm just gonna move them which you know yes I understand means I'm getting a fraction of the money that I could for some but it's okay um, just like the challenge we've got you know with precision farming coming in when it did you know we're we're doing the best we can Alright, so we'll let that fold up. Try not to get caught in the moving parts while I get out and hang out and, and connect up my PTO. So the other thing I want to do is enable my straw swath. So there we go. I heard, I heard some stuff. I don't know if you heard it, but... So, and then I want to get my GPS set while I head over and be as efficient as I can given that I only have a set amount of time and unfortunately I can't operate as uh, as I need to any whoops I'm trying to unfold my harvester and I hit the X key while other things were happening all right, let's see. Are we good? I think we're good. All right. So let's begin. I didn't really even check because there's not really any doubt in my mind that it's ready. It obviously is harvesting. I see straw. So all things that are good. <laughs> and so... What I'll likely do is get a few passes. Maybe I'll fill up the harvester. We'll see where we're at. And then I might go collect. But with precision farming, you can see we've got our yield map drawing in the mini map. Now, I'm going to be curious if it stays up in that yellowish you know 100% range b 
because when I walked into the field beyond where I could soil sample, um, I was seeing 64% yield, which would be down in the red-orange range. I'm just hoping it's not going to be that mean to me, but sometimes with precision farming applied while crops are in the ground, the crops that are in the ground basically lose any kind of bonus that they would have. Because, yeah, this is actually turning greenish, which would actually be better than the yellow. And I certainly did not sample here. I didn't drive up along this range and take a look, so... Because the other thing is, at least if I can get a nice high output and yield of wheat, of oats, not wheat, my hope is that then that would mean my straw is also higher. And it might be wishful thinking, but I think that swath looks a bit beefier than what I had when I was yellow. But I don't know. So... Yeah, looking at the uh, kind of, you know, hitting the purchase button, the X button farmland in the map and clicking around, um, field 39 is actually really nice from a yield standpoint. It's like 117%. So um, he hit the jackpot with that, I will say. But... um looks like looks like they harvested maybe yesterday I'm gonna turn on my lines whoops wrong button all right so I'm gonna go up further yeah I can see this is gonna line up so instead of kind of cutting into the middle I'm gonna go do this this way. Now I can't do it quite there because it's going to hit the tree. Now I guess I would have just got by but that's awfully close so I'd prefer not to do that. Alright. So let me see here. So I'm guessing although it picked up a bit but it's dropping some interesting it's like it's picking up the straw again I don't understand am I like destroying the straw okay I'm not like harvesting here oh, I wonder if we have there's a there's a beware of straw mod and I vaguely remember seeing that on the uh, on the server, and I'm wondering if that's what we've got going on. So basically, this is going to make it more challenging because, yeah, I was like basically destroying my straw there for a bit. I mean, luckily not terribly long, but I'm gonna have to figure out what this means. And it's probably a reality of how things work, but I may have to like turn off straw for certain things. All right. I think we're still good because it grabbed a little bit of the one so I think like when I touch this little bit up here I'm gonna have to turn it off and then maybe at another point I'll have to disable it too because otherwise I'm basically cannibalizing my straw well that's disappointing but I'm going to definitely just 
Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, I might... I don't know. It's probably not worth it for that little bit. Alright, so we'll get a tiny bit more here. Disable it. Let me make sure it's disabled. It is. Now the question is, what I need to watch is, is it going to... It is. Alright. Ay, ay, ay. Alright. So, I'm going to go this way. Otherwise, I'm basically hitting the same straw, so... Yeah, this makes it more challenging. I didn't realize, because I, I vaguely remember seeing it in the install items. So I'm going to turn it back on, so turning it off doesn't entirely help. But I remember seeing it in the mods for the server at some point. And I've never played with that mod. Um, and I understand it's kind of that type of thing, and that's what it's called, is Beware of Straw. Um, and I think it's because of that. Like, you have to not drive over the straw, or you basically destroy it. I've, I've again, not used the mod, so I didn't know what it did. I just thought it meant like when you were harvesting it caused you a problem but all right so I have it back on which is what I thought but you can see here again we're yellow and I would say well I don't know it is pretty beefy there but I'm just gonna have to be careful when I get up there and then at the end again that I don't drop a swath so it is interesting. It's almost like I'd kind of be better off picking up the straw in between. I'm going to have to think about this over time, how I best want to deal with this. Because I think here I'm going to be able to just turn a bit and avoid the straw and then pop back, but at the end I'm going to have to stop. and then figure out, you know, what I want to do from the other direction. But I'm just going to free myself up here, because I don't think I need to move over a lot. Because you can see the line's almost going to be clear, but it's not quite. So again, I don't want to ruin any that I don't have to, if I can avoid it. But, um, all right, so now I can get back on the line so that everything's straight. And again, I may have to, the problem is it's almost like I'm going to have to constantly be doing this. Hmm. Because it's almost like what I'm going to want to do now is stop the straw when I have to turn. So pretty soon here. All right, so I'm gonna turn it off there. Whoops, whoops, I don't wanna take any away. And then yeah, we do this for this part, and then when I come back through the rest, I'm just, um, you know, running it from the other end, because I'm going to have a little bit of straw dropping, and then I may have to, again, stop the straw swath, but basically I need to not do, I need to stop creating straw I need to avoid. You know, which I think is kind of the point of 
beware of straws. It's it's dangerous because you have potential issues like that. Um, all right. So now I'm gonna turn it on again. All right. So like now I. I can have some, but this will be a little bit. Uh, and, you know, it'll increase later as, as I get further over. I may be okay here. Um, I don't know. It's going to be close, but I think I'm going to be clear. is a good sign but yeah I think I'm gonna do a little bit more it just doesn't seem like enough especially now that I've had to tinker with the straw because again if I can get a hundred thousand I would like to do that so that I can top that thing off and especially if it starts producing immediately um, you know because then I'd like to kind of keep track of what's happening so that I can try to understand how fast it makes feed. Because I'm guessing it's not going to change based on how many cattle I have. So yeah, the good news here is I think we're actually going to be okay. So yeah, I just can't move over substantially, but yeah, I lost a good amount. I mean... I mean, we'll see as we're harvesting, but I could see that that's a few thousand liters that, if it's anything like the grass that I was picking up. So now let me pay attention here, because otherwise I'm going to have a problem, because we're going to run into some things. Let me go get my truck. All right. So, I just didn't think this through very well. I'm just so focused on the cows, because I literally blocked myself from the way I normally come in. Um, I think I can get there. So I think it'll be okay. This might actually be better. Oh, my trailer's not even here. What did I do with it? Maybe it's on the end? No, I don't remember. <laughs> All right, let me find my trailer. Don't you hate it when you put stuff away right where it's supposed to be and then you forget you put it where it was supposed to be? Anyway, um, here's my trailer. With the harvester gone, I should be able to pull out here with it. So, connect up. All right. I just want to get clear of those trees, but there we go, because that's right where the harvester is, which is why normally I can't make that turn when the harvester, <laughs> excuse me, hiccuping there, when the harvester is parked. So, but yeah, like I said, normally that trailer won't be there. So you can see we've got, you know, some good lighting around. It's kind of that red stuff so the cows can sleep at night but you know something some light so I can see now the one thing I don't know I'm, I mean I'm imagining I can run over the straw with a truck I'm hoping it doesn't like do crop destruction on top of it so let me keep an eye on things it doesn't look like it so because that would just be awful if it's like okay you can't even go unload your combine and that you're basically having to do things in between. Let me clear these because that's going to be my next problem. I'll be like, what is happening? Why did it stop? Alright, so that will work. So, I'll hop back in here because we're 
going to be perfectly fine filling that up. Go forward again. What I needed to do is get gas, so I am going to have to do that in between. But what I'll do is I'm going to get the next harvester full, so we'll stick together through that. Continue to enjoy our time, and then I will just, you know, do the gas and all of that once I'm continuing on my own and off camera. But, you know, because what I will do is, I, you know, I want to get the straw going, but once it's going, I'm not going to then go get cows immediately because I'm, I need to beat this rain. So I need to do what I can to get all this done. Now this is interesting because honestly this straw swath, I, I would say it's off center. Um, you can see where my light is, which I assume is in the center of my vehicle. And the straw swath is dropping to the left of it for some reason just a quirk of the model, I'm sure, but um, it's a quirk nonetheless. So I'm thinking the f that field 13 is harvested, so I probably am not going to have any concern there about running through crop, so that will make it a little bit easier. I hope he was nice to me and didn't run through my crop, because I'm certainly going to be careful you know, if I have that, obviously, whoop, I don't want to get too close to the river because then I'm going to have be driving tractors in to get straw. So, all right, let me line up here, get ourselves down, and we'll go. Alright, I think we'll have to come back one more time, at least partially, so... And that will be good, I mean, if we have to. But really, if you think about it, we've got three-ish passes, probably, over there. Um, so, we'll see if we go back. But yeah, if I'm getting the yellow, going back to the original conversation I had... Because initially when I was standing on the field, the precision farming thing told me the expected yield was 64%. And I think that's simply because it doesn't know, because I haven't soil sampled, so it's being super conservative. But, um, not sure. So... Um, but yeah, if this straw is nothing like the grass, you know, then we'll, we'll have a lot less, and it's going to take a lot more straw, but I, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of fear that I'm going to not get a hundred thousand and actually not get substantially more than that, but what we're going to run into then is storage, which I had talked about a little bit. And so what my plan had been is I'm... I think my only way to store it is with a hayloft. I don't know that there's other storage. I'll probably take a bit of time to figure that out. And once again, this is where I now have a challenge in that... Um, you know, I've got rain coming. Now, to my knowledge rain doesn't change anything with precision farming loaded if I've got straw on the field or whatever. It's going to stay. It's not going to diminish like that used to happen in FS19. Um, so you were kind of bailing or trying to do whatever because if you got it in bales it lasted longer but even bales would deteriorate if left on the fields. Um, that dynamic isn't present that I'm aware of, that I've seen, but, um, so I, th you know, I think what I would do is 
once I know and I have some, because at, at a minimum, whatever I have, uh, I'm just going to keep harvesting if I don't get 100,000 off of here. But if I, if I have more, I'm just going to leave it on the field. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy haylofts as needed. So the capacity of a hayloft is just 250,000 liters. So if I get something similar where I get a million liters off of this field, um, that I did with the grass, you know, then I'm going to have have a decision to make. But um, and I'm trying to honestly think through it now as we're together, so that you understand what my you know what what my thinking is. So I'm going to do my normal thinking out loud that. Hopefully, people enjoy. But, um, you know, the challenge becomes. Because you know, I've got a couple options. I could just disable the straw swath at a certain point and say, all right, I've got another 250,000. That's more than enough. Um, or I could run this whole field and say, yep, I'm going to. I'm going to straw the whole field so that I can kind of plant things that don't require straw going forward per periodically um, and give myself some breathing room. But I, I can probably give myself some breathing room perhaps with even just two haylofts with 500,000. Because the other thing I'm, th that's nice with that is it's that round number of, you know, it's 100,000 of hay that I can fit in the robotic feeder area so if I you know do something even versus 250,000 with just one hayloft um, you know that's good and then that could also maybe be my trigger point for straw is like all right one of my haylofts is empty I'm gonna you know I have another one to pull from while I'm waiting for my crop to grow etc because unlike grass and hay, where I could basically instantly get that off the field, since it harvests, it's harvestable every two months. Um, you know, straw is going to be the one that I have to plan a little bit with. You know, but my point was like I could say, hey, I've only got this versus, hey, I get a million, I build four haylofts, and then like I don't need straw for a really long time, and then I know when I'm doing it again. Um, then I'm somewhat playing that game because, you know, I'm probably going to do straw before I'm out. You know, I mean, it'd be foolish not to. And then I run the situation like if I suddenly get another million, but I've got one of the haylofts full when I'm done with that, but then I don't have enough room. So I would have to you know, stop and, you know, I mean, my other option is I, I do it all and then I just go sell the hay or the straw for the minimal amount I get to just dispose of it, basically. All right, so not sure if at the end of this row we'll be full. Yeah, I think it's looking like that may be where we end up. We might not even quite get there, which is okay too. Now if we don't, I'll probably get back in the harvester and finish it just so I can pick up a full row and, and not have that be a, an option that is in my way here. Alright, so yes, I'm not going to get all the way there. Alright. So it's telling me that at 8, if you remember, was when it was going to rain. Now recall that, again, that's an estimate. Um, so pretty much any time after 7.30 is fair game. So it could, you know, it will likely, if it sticks with that, I would expect it to start raining between 7.30 and 8.30, if the forecast is saying 8. Um, you know, technically, probably 7.31 and 8.30. All right, so I'm going to actually wait for this truck to fill because 
to get the straw, I'm going to need the truck out of the way as well. So I'm going to then pull it up on the grass over there. Because otherwise I'm just going to have to move it unless I get super lucky and, you know, the, the straw is as prolific as the grass. And then I don't even get this far before I'm at 100,000. But I don't think that's going to be the case. So I'm just going to put it way up here for now. Which will mean I've got to drive a, a ways later to get it, but that's okay. And then I'm going to finish this row and move the harvester to the next one and and then take a break and then I'll obviously in the meantime then I'll get gas and stuff like that again once I'm done but for now I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna keep you here and we're gonna go pick up some hay or straw too many things that I'm dropping on the ground that I need to collect Right. And with a baler, that giant thing at the end is a problem, but with the forage wagon, I think it's got a big enough intake that I think it'll just suck it up fine. So this, again, is not something I've normally done myself in any substantial way. So I'm going to get myself up on the flat ground, kind of crest the hill here at least. Um, just be a little easier to start up. All right, we'll say that's good enough. And so I will stop that so it's not burning gas. All right, and here we are. Let me see. Looks like everything's connected. All right, so now why is this telling me that it has silage in it? Maybe since that's the last thing I had, I'm hoping that's what it is. <coughs> All right, so I reset my uh, my forage wagon and then we will get it lined up we'll turn it on and we should be good there we go I changed a straw panic averted it's just again not understanding how things work all right well we may be as prolific as grass or, hey maybe even more so Ooh, I missed a bit there, but that's all right. I'll try to pick it up later, or again, at, at the level we've got here. I think if I leave a little straw in the field, that might be okay. But, yeah, so that run was, what, 15,000 just in that swath, and now we'll see what we get here. I'll be surprised if we get to 16. Yeah, so a couple hundred. So, as I said, especially at the rate it was producing, I destroyed thousands of liters of... Whoops. A little bit further than is necessary. So, there we go. Now I'll have grabbed that, because that was when I jumped in line not understanding what would be happening because yeah in 19 we didn't have that and so you just harvested and dropped and you just drove through it but obviously that's not how this works so yeah if you remember when we went across the field with grass um, and it's possible down here is a bit wider but we had like 28,000 um, and 
we have that even with thousands destroyed we're gonna have over 30 like well over 30 might even be at 33 here heck we almost hit 34 um, I'm half tempted to try to pick up that straw but I'm also thinking I can't because um, it's probably, he probably couldn't because it's too far onto the other field. And I don't own that other field either. So my guess is I would get the same error he would get. Of, you don't own this land. So that's another one of those you try to be careful with stuff like this. So when I'm going the other way, for example, I need to, you know, and, and again, you're only hurting yourself if you're not because you can't get to that straw that you've created and your intent was to have straw so all right well good news is we're definitely gonna have a hundred thousand but now our test is going to be um, okay so I could go through there but our test is going to be do I does the robotic feeder immediately start going so at a minimum, I'm going to take some notes because I think to get some values, I'm almost going to have to go by like set periods of time. So I may be like ridiculously anal here and wait until I see the time switch to 540 before I even start dumping so that I'm basically on track and I think we're okay here. Alright, so, but that's what I'm going to do. Because then I'm going to know. So there we go. So basically, almost immediately at 540, now we're dumped. But the question is, can I tell... if the robot is doing anything? because I can't see that so you can see my grass is still being processed after all these days so it takes some time but yeah it's just a cow feeding robot so let me see like if anything is changing all right so right now it's full like it's 50,000 straw nothing has changed and it might happen at the top of the hour it might, you know, operate at a different rate. So I'm going to go over here and then, you know, deal with this, these partial rows here. And again, they're only partial because of what I had done. Um, as far as how I had to harvest once I figured out what, or had to drop straw once I figured out what was happening so not much there but almost 500 from just that little bit of oats that were there at that point but yeah I'll pick this up and then we'll have this cleaned but I would say we might have 200,000 liters of, of, oat, of uh, straw here already. And the question really becomes, like, do I want... Hmm. Because now that I know kind of the output level we're talking about, I just don't know that I want more than 500,000. And part of that is, you know, where I could be kicking myself, although I think I'll still find out before I'm done. Well, but I won't, because I'll be harvesting. So I'm, I think I'm going to have to take the chance and just drop straw everywhere. And, you know, the challenge is, what I'm struggling with is, let's say I only want 500,000, but then I find out when it's feeding things that it consumes that and that the cows consume that in I mean it'll be it's a ridiculous example but they consume it in a year 
um, so that I don't even get a year out of it because you know if we think about it with 108 pigs we're going through basically 70,000 liters of food a year so if I were to kind of extrapolate that and I get their pay their cows instead of pigs um, so it's obviously not apples for apples but you know if I have five times the animals in theory that would mean I'm gonna go through about 350,000 liters of material in a year but TMR is what they'll be eating and TMR is not a hundred percent straw so I would need I would need some fraction of 350,000 you know even if it was say one for one of the five components actually it's only four components that go into it um, you know that would be uh, you know eighty five thousand ninety thousand in um, in straw in a year now again cows may eat a lot more so it may consume five hundred thousand liters of TMR in a year when I have two hundred and forty cows in there um, you know that's the part I don't know and I suppose you know I could build haylofts and sell them off it's just obviously then it will have done whatever it's done to the land if I do that because I don't really have I can't really tuck the haylofts in places I can't easily get to um, so I'm at a bit of a conundrum there but yeah at this point yeah, I think we easily have 200,000 already with what we've got so we may get a million a million and a half liters and once again I can just sell the straw off if I choose not to use it all right so I don't know like there's nothing happening that makes me think the feeder is doing anything right now because that cart leaves at times when the robot arms operating a screen goes down in front of these areas and you can't unload for example now I'll be able to 100% unload here but at this point whoops I don't want to do that because I turned it off because I'm like at this point I don't need the uh, okay so we definitely verified like it's not operating without uh, animals in them but I'm maxed out at this point so right now I'm gonna continue to beat the rain and the plan I think is gonna be I'm just gonna drop all the straw I may regret it later but that's going to be the plan and um, when I start moving animals in I'll bring you along again so I'll see you in a while all right so I'm here at six o'clock you can see the arm going down it's collecting up some I guess some hay it's coming over dropping it in and then um, you know but the screen is down and now you can see the little feeding robot is going to come out and do its thing so it goes over here and then he comes in and I think he comes right back out the same way but you can see 3500 food and then a decrease so it was making it it just looks like it starts right at the uh, so let's see yeah it looks like it's just pouring it out as it comes this way I've never really watched it this close I know I've seen it move around but there you go so I assume now it's fully empty and uh, 
you know, that's what they've got. So, I don't know if it's going to change throughout the hour, but I'll take a look. All right, so if I take a look at those numbers, again, I apologize, but I want to not lose many minutes as I'm doing this um, to the fact that, um, you know, I'm talking and analyzing, but I want to keep harvesting. So I want to get this harvester going. But if I look at that, so it looks like maybe once an hour it's going to feed, which makes sense. And so quickly running some numbers. Um, we got 3,500 food. And then I'm sure that some of this is a rounding error, but basically we had 1,310 liters of hay and silage consumed, and then 715 liters of straw, and 167 liters of mineral feed. And that gets us a total of 3,502 liters. So we are, in a sense, just converting the food one for one. Um, okay, this is not good. So I should be able, there we go, because it was like moving. I'm like, am I just going to push it with some imaginary force field? But obviously I had left the header to um, go ahead and get gas. So again, I, I think it's 3,502 probably because the 1310 really should be 1309, but for whatever reason it wasn't. And again, I suppose, you know, if it, it's going to be what it's going to be. There's nothing I can really do to change it. Um, but I was going to say if it's going to consume two extra liters to make TMR every time. Obviously that'll add up over time, but it's how it operates. So, you know, I'm going to have to operate within those parameters. So, you know, what I'll have to keep doing, and I'll keep doing that as I go along, is keep checking periodically, because I'm going to have plenty of time as I go through here, and see if that continues, and once again, see if it's just every hour. Um, my assumption is, since this is a, well no, this isn't a base game, I don't think, I think this is a mod. So there's a possibility, because I've certainly run into mods that aren't well balanced, but my hope is that that 3,500 liters is more than enough feed for 240 fully developed, fully mature cows. So that when the barn is full, that the feeder is keeping up because if it's not then we have a problem because I, I'd in essence have to supplement with like an outside TMR mixer that is mixing food at the same time and that I'm manually taking in which would be quite irritating um, but then I can start to figure out my consumption if that you know and that I may need no more data points than that if I can just verify that at the top of every hour that's what it does because you know the other piece that I have to keep in mind is you know it was 540 when I put things in there that may be 20 minutes of production and that's in essence what it it modeled and so I may see three times that in an hour um, because I just got incredibly lucky in that I did an evenly divisible amount of minutes in uh, in the hour when I had enough quantity for it to be creating. That would seem really strange if it goes to the minute as to when things are in, but it's a computer, so it can do a lot of things. So I'm not going to beat it to death with discussion. I think you get the idea of what I'm doing, but I just wanted to show, hey, it was operating. It did start operating at 6 o'clock. And what I saw initially was the numbers go down um, and then by the time I got video going again and recording, uh, the robot was working. So, you know, I'm sure at some point we can take a, another look at it. But 
you saw the kind of all the interesting parts. I mean, I think, you know, it may, the uh, scoop may go to each area. It may take, you know, a minute or so to do the whole thing. I don't know. Um, and it may do it multiple times an hour, but just not change the feed. But we'll figure all that out. Uh, and then once I have that, I can give a more intelligent answer on what my process will be and start thinking that through. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I'm back here. Had to get off for a bit. Whoops. Uh, don't want to disconnect the back, want to disconnect the front. So I've got a couple things going on, but at this point I'm going to deal with the one that is of more interest, which is swapping out my animals. Um, I'm also full in my silo, and as you can see, I didn't get everything finished, but that last load um, I had to bring back 11,000 liters because it was not fitting in the silo. So I'm also going to have to figure out what product I'm selling and what I'm doing with it. And that'll be easy enough because I can get it into the customs. And the straw is out here to still be collected, but as I knew, rain was coming. So it still says 10 o'clock that it'll be done. So again, that could be 10.30 something like that. I don't know exactly when it started. I was off. So, um... But, at this point, I'm just, well, going to the wrong place, and I need to go here. Right, so my plan is, because I'm not in a massive rush, at least not right away, and if I decide I am, I can always accelerate things a bit. But what I'm going to do is, I gotta take three loads of pigs to empty this out, and then, uh, you know, that means I need to uh, take three trips. So, what I'm gonna do then is bring back three loads of cows. So before I do that, I just wanna show you, we're gonna be at 14,000, there we go. And how did I know that before I saw the number? Uh, because this is now four hours, because basically we had six, seven, eight, and nine. And it, it has been running at 3,500 an hour. So the good news is, like, that is the number. That is how much feed is generated. That's what's going to be consumed. So I just need to go do the math, which I have not done, because I've been dealing with life in between but have a little bit of a break and knew I could get in here because my goal is if it does stop at 10 or 10 30 um, I'm gonna have a little bit of time and I'd like to get the harvest done but now I also know that that means I need to take some crop likely over to customs I need to figure out what I'm doing so forth all right so I guess I'll just start with it with the uh, cheap ones. We're gonna move them to the trailer. So there we go. So now I'm maxed out. And eventually we'll have a lot less. So we are having, it seems, some issues with the uh, servers. Because people are running into situations where a lot of us have had to report uh, in FSN to what we call server stability, which is the operations group that many times will just reboot the servers. But um, we're now to the point where we're being told, all right, if there's multiple at once, it's likely not an FSN, just that the servers are hiccuping. It's likely the provider issue, Nitrato that has something going on. Which they still need to investigate, but they're just trying to level set that like this may may not work. So to get on in the morning initially, I did have to have them reboot the server. And in between is when I saw that note and I'm like, uh oh, maybe I won't be able to get back on here. But I was able to. So just happy for that. 
And again, I don't know the intricacies of the server issues and so forth, so... You know, even though it was on, because, you know, my initial indication would be, well, they reboot my server, though, and it's still visible, even though others are having trouble. So, like it or not, it may just be a bunch of reboots that are needed, but, you know, I don't work with that support side that often, so maybe even though the behavior appears that way, uh, if I was troubleshooting it, it doesn't mean that that is the solution that works based on a lot more history that they'll have that I certainly do not. So I am just grateful I can get back in here. So uh, because I'm going to have some limited time today to get in after the next hour or two and so I'd like to at least have the harvest off the field by then, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So, but what I'm going to do, and, and then that's going to determine the next pieces, is every trip is going to be pigs in and cows out. And I think just to avoid, I don't know, although I guess it's nice to have some variety, and since I'm not, like, taking them out, I can do that. But, um, so, you know, maybe I'll do half and half of, of the, the cows. But the other thing of why I'm starting the way I'm starting is I'm just going to buy fully mature cows, which is more expensive. But, um, I, that way they're just doing things right away, and I'm not just feeding cows and waiting months and months for something to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and splurge, because I can, because I think it's only going to take me um, basically about what I'll get for the high-end pigs if I had $1,200 pigs, but I don't. But it's, I think, 48000 or something is what it'll cost me for those 36 cows, because they're fifteen fifty each. And then I'll probably get... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to get Holsteins. I'm not going to worry about it. I, it's not like I sit there and stare at them. Um, but on the other hand, it is fun to look at different cows. I don't know. <laughs> right now, I'm going to get 12 Holsteins. How about that? So I'm going to select those. Sell them. 23,000. All right. So we're going to select, most I can get is 12, we're going to buy, and so even at that end, you know, and you can see them in there, so yay for me, even at the low end I was able to make more money from the pigs than I was able to, that I needed to purchase the cows. So this is a good thing, because those were my cheapest pigs. So I know I'm not going to overpay. So my one concern is, like, maybe the Holsteins uh, make more milk than the others, and I, I'm not going to know. So it's just more of a matter of do I want to do I want to have brown cows along with spotted cows? And I suppose for variety that might be nice. So maybe I'll do that. But I probably don't need a lot. I don't know. I'll just do half and half and, and be done. So the last load will be more complicated because I'll be getting six and six. But, um... So... Yeah, we're going to run these over, and these will these first ones will be there before uh, before ten. So they're going to start eating right away because that's what they do in farming simulator. Looks like someone's got some grass on the road, but again, stuff happens, and it's hard to get every last bit. 
Looks like someone ran into the field there. I did have to apologize to Lin Spy for going into their field while I was harvesting. I did. I haven't destroyed any of my crops yet, but um, I did sadly go a little too far and went like a harvester length into their field. So it's been resolved. Well, I mean, it's not been resolved. I've talked to them. I can't resolve it, but but they did plant field 13 next to me already. I was hoping it was just harvested and I'd just be able to drive around, but in the rush to get as far as I could before the rain, uh, made a mistake. So no lag, no nothing. I was just in a hurry and misjudged and ran into his field. So kind of right in that space. You can see it there, the little black tracks you can see from here. So, through the trees, yep, you can see it. So, if you wanted to see it, it's there. Go back, freeze freeze the video, do whatever. But, yes, I'm not going to, like, take you on a tour and drive it over or anything. But I'm going to get these pigs done and moved. And once I'm done with that, I'll show you my new cows wandering around in the field. And then when I can, I will finish up my harvest. And then the last thing then here will be, what do I do with the extra straw? And I believe I'll tack that onto this episode and make it gigantic, just like the last few. But we've got a lot going on here. So, And this is all one day, so it kind of makes sense to try to keep it together even though I had the little intro of precision farming showing up before but in any event I guess now that I'm here I'll keep you around for a few moments while I dump them whoop I went too far so my transportation is no longer valid there we go now it is so we're gonna move them to the husbandry and there they go. There they go. So there they are. One's already laying down. They're excited. All right. So, yep, they moo. So I'm going to keep going and I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. So six o'clock, as you can see. So it's getting a little bit late, but this is when I'm back and starting up here. So cows continue to get fed. Uh, I'm going to work on the straw at this point. So as we talked about, I'm going to get it moved over. And after the first load, or well, actually, I'm not going to do it after the first load because I know I need at least one storage place. So once I figure out what I'm doing, I'm going to get you back here. We'll place it and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place, place this here. I think that'll let us do what we need. So i find out. If in fact it will. So, should be okay here. So yeah, I think this is how I would get things out. So, I just want to make sure that I don't have any issues. No, nope, I can get it in and out, so that'll work well. And I think should be good, but we'll obviously take a look. Whoop. I haven't used this in a while, so everything's disconnected again. I always kind of take a peek to make sure. So let me collect this up and we'll see how it all goes once we get moving. Alright, so I've tested this out. I can dump in here 
and fill from there. So I just had dumped the full load and then gone ahead and done that. So we'll go ahead and see what everything looks like then. But I will get this all picked up and we'll be good to go. So uh, before I pop off here and don't, uh, you know, and, and am done. Uh, I've got a couple things. I'm going to figure out what the um, usage is and how long things go with the feeding robot. At this point, there's about 41,000 liters of food for the cows. We obviously still have 36 cows. Now, my concern is, and this is where I'm going to have to see how everything works, with 36 cows, when I take what the 36 cows are eating and multiply it then across, you know, divide it to figure out that what a cow eats and then div multiply it by 240, it seems to exceed what the feeding robot can do in an hour. So I'm hoping I'm wrong. Um, but... You know, I'm going to take a look and just observe as things go over time, obviously. I've also figured out as I'm picking these up, uh, we do have these a little bit too wide. So this still is not great for uh, what it does. I'm going to have cleanup to do. That's not too bad there, but... But, um... No, the piece that's just got to get figured out is um so hold on sorry i just want to get moving on this but as i said i verified it's uh you know 3500 an hour is what it's creating obviously decreasing that so i'll go do all those calcs offline and when we're back together i'll explain what i've learned but what I was doing when I popped on to talk about, hey, it's time to go get the straw, uh, and I was driving an empty truck, I had finished moving some crop over for sale. So I tried a couple things. Initially, sorghum was actually worth more. It was about $50 more, 1000 on the server than it was to direct sell, which is pretty rare. So I had taken 80,000 liters, or well, 78,000 because it has a weight limit. Um, so I couldn't fill the truck entirely. But about 78,000 liters and sold it. But right now, because my fields don't have, haven't been optimized for precision farming, my environmental score is 39. And so with the environmental score that low, there's actually a penalty, I think, once you get below 50% to uh, your sale price. So I ended up losing, it says 3%, but on each of those trailers that meant translated to about $500. So there was $1,000 of loss selling that way. So I stopped doing that at that point. And then I found wheat was actually worth a good amount more, about 170 a thousand more for direct sell. So, and I had a good amount of that. I had well over 600,000. So to make it simple, because we can't exceed contracts over 480. Or, or 500,000, sorry, I have 480 in my head, because that's what I delivered was 480,000, because that was just an even number of truck, of 80,000 liter trucks. So I got six trucks over there throughout the day. So I was coming back from the last one of those when I joined and started sharing a bit more. So I've got a contract out for $555.55 per thousand for 480,000 liters of wheat. So that's going to bring in, I think it said about 266,000. So that'll be nice. 
and you know I'll determine if I transfer that in or not but you know it's profit from the crops and I'll probably be slowly selling off crops as I have time and as I see good prices because what I don't want to keep running into is situations where I can't do my harvest without suddenly trying to find a crop I can sell at that moment. I'd be happier to be able to do it in not real time but you know just find things as I went along and kind of do it where I can get a pretty good price whether it's here on the server or not. So that was what I was doing. So that gets you up to speed. So I'm going to go ahead and get this straw done and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need it immediately so I can show you where I'm at once I come back next time because again I think this is going to be an hour plus episode as it is and I'm trying to get things back to a little bit of a reasonable length again but I've also been wanting to share everything I'm doing with the cows where normally I'd be cutting things in smaller segments but had a lot to tell, a lot to go on and at this point the cows aren't at full health so I'm also not sure if they eat more or maybe they eat less once they kind of get to a hundred percent so I'll probably see that later today or tomorrow for sure because they're at about I think collectively 83 percent which because I think the first batch I bought before the time the hour shifted is at 90 percent and the others are 80 percent so they're pulling the average down a bit because there's 24 of those that got purchased an hour later so we'll see how everything plays out and we'll go from there but at this point I'm going to sign off and I'll see you next time.